The 6.5 is live here in New York City at the Cloudera Evolve event 2023. Dan, we are on the road. We're talking about many of our favorite topics here. Big data, a lot of data, but the thing that some people think was invented nine months ago, but wasn't, and that is uh, generative AI. So, you know, we have talked about so many things here at the show, technologies, products, uh, partnerships, but of course, as you know, everything comes together. If it's not for the end users, the people actually pay money and try to solve problems with all of this, it's, it's all pretty much for naught. You mean customers? I know, imagine uh, that. Wild. Now I got to tell you, when you said nine months ago, people thought generative AI was invented. <laughs> I think there's some people that think nine months ago, AI was invented. Yeah, back in the 60s, little algorithms, you know. So. I think it's been a minute. And I think yeah. a lot of the things when people are like, can you imagine life without like the ability to, I don't know, punch in a question and get an answer. It's like, yeah, I've been doing that. It's called Google. I mean, I've right. been doing that for quite a while. It's, yes, I get it. It's different and the way it formats the text, but we, for people like us, sometimes, you know, we just have to take a breath yeah. and realize that we're in it, but there's really exciting things coming on. But back to that customer lens thing, I definitely believe, Pat, that every company on the planet that really wants to win a market has to have the view of the customer in mind and has to really be able to articulate their value proposition. That's right, technology for technology's sake is worthless, but when applied to customer problems and solving, it's a big deal. There's nobody else at Cloudera I'd rather talk to about this than Cindy. Cindy, welcome to back to the 6.5. It's great to have you on. Thank, we must have maybe said something right or, or not offended too badly, because you're back and we appreciate yeah. that. Well, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Yes. Well, thank you for having me the back. The no offended list, the not offended list, and they come <laughs> back. Is that like a, we should have that on our site. I know, it's a big um, uh, marketing uh, tagline. Yeah, but uh, we do appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Look, I think, you know, we've talked some ecosystems here. We've had, spent, had the opportunity to spend some time with your CEO here, um, but I continue to think that uh, gener generative AI and these customer use cases are really the barrier to m mass adoption and growth in the business. And a lot of the effort here at Cloudera Evolve 2023 has been really talking through the eyes of the customers, operationalizing these use cases. Talk a little bit about how you at Cloudera are talking to customers about operationalizing these so that you can obviously gain the adoption uh, and benefit from all the data that Cloudera has under management. Yeah, so, you know, that's a good question. And, you know, I think a lot of times, especially technologies, technologists or technology companies, we always talk about the how. And it's like, you know, here's how you go do it. And it's right. like, yeah, but why and what are you trying to do? Um, and, you know, my premise is always like, we've got to be able to solve a problem with it. Or maybe you're truly creating a new business model or something right. like that. But it's really about, you know, when you think about Gen AI and you know everything data related, it's like you're using it to solve for something. Um, and so what problem are you trying to solve for? What type of questions right. are you trying to answer? Um, and so from an operational perspective, you know, companies are actually saying, if I can use data and I can use data differently, is it truly giving me new insights? Um, and just from a Gen AI perspective, it's also, yeah, this is cool, this is the latest buzzword. You know, we've heard people say, sounds interesting, but we're not sure yet. Um, and how would I actually use it? But for, more importantly, it's like, are there still problems that are out there that you haven't been able to solve for? And so when you start to think about operationalizing on Gen AI, it's fundamentally about, okay, what problem can we solve with it? Um, and I think that's a, where a lot of companies are still trying, are trying to look at it and they're struggling with how do I actually do it? Um, and then, you know, AI in general, um, business has always said, you know, that's why we're, um, I'm a former accountant, a recovering right. accountant is what I like to say. It's like, let me prove it. You know, people used to take the, you know, here's the report and they're like, hey, you know what? Let me 10 key that because I want to prove the math. Right. Right. So it's kind of like, Gen AI is like the next, you know, true generation of, you know, some of the things that, you know, were the barriers to adoption. People got to trust the data. Right. And so, yeah, and it's like, where'd it come from? What's the source and how can I actually truly use it? So, so once uh, customers get to the point where maybe they have a thesis on that, hey, you know what? Generative AI or machine learning uh, can help solve their problems in some unique way that quite frankly, either increases revenue or cut costs. That's, that's, that's what businesses do. 
what are some of the barriers that they're finding to a adopting that or, or even operationalizing it? And, and maybe talk a little bit about, because uh, on stage I, I saw a bunch of customers uh, talk about in the context of AI, how are they overcoming these challenges? Yeah, you know, I think one of the things, and you know, we've always kicked the can down the road when it comes to data governance um, and the data quality issues. Um, and I think that's one of the key, we're still continuing to see that as a barrier to adoption. It's like, right. we continue, the, the cost of bad data, and now you're actually saying, I'm going to use you know, advanced AI techniques, and if it's bad data, I'm like, okay, so what are you going to get? A bad answer, you know, multiplied. And so you've got to, people are going, I'm still worried about that data. Right. Um, is it quality data? Can I actually trust it to do you know, the right business decision? And then you start talking about you know, the fact that we have techniques around, I've got all this new type of data. And it's like, I think where we're starting to see people say, I can get business value is, it's not just that traditional type data. I've got you know, stuff that's been, you know, your data landscape. Right. You, know, you guys know I like to use that word, but it's like, it's like I got stuff in content management systems. I now have stuff in videos. I've got voice files, um, and you know when you're starting to talk about, you know, that type of data. What are the techniques that I use to go after some of that unstructured exactly. data? And that's critical. And people are like, yeah, but where'd that come from? And so you see a lot of like, from a data governance perspective, it's like, where's the data? Where'd it come from? Who touched it last? Has it been manipulated? Um, and you know, for certain industries, are the regulars going to let me use that data? Right. So um, that's some of the aspect. And then one other um, element um, had conversations with folks is, you know, how do I actually make these things happen, and why will business want to adopt it? And as soon as you can start to say, they can answer, hey, is my data honest? Right. Is it helpful? And is it harmless? Because you know, responsible AI, um, you know, especially for the um, some of the, the key industries, that harmless component is huge. And given what we see in Gen AI and the ability to hallucinate, it's going to be one of the the challenges. You got to address that right. from a data governance perspective. Cindy, I have to ask. So I went to. I'm not going to tell you exactly when I went to college. Uh, oh, but I it was, probably went there before. But you it was did. in the mid '80s, and um, literally. In one of my computer classes, it was garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. It's something that we've known for a long time. So, is this? It's it's a consistent theme, isn't this? Yes. But, but you know, I believe that as um, we're spreading the data out, and it's moving from structured to unstructured, and the amount of data uh, has gone up uh, uh, so much, it, it's been even harder to uh, manage all all of that data. Am I hallucinating here uh, as a uh, pat bot, or uh, have we been talking about this challenge for ever? Decades. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I mean, it, it goes back to, I think the problem's just gotten bigger. And, and we, you know, I don't think it's gone away, and I think right. it's, you know, people start to have to address that, and it's like, you know, how do you actually have capabilities that say, you know, I'm not going to have data in one central location. It's just not going to happen. Um, and so, how do I get a governance process in place um, and also um, dealing with you know, data that's anywhere mm -hmm. um, and bringing that type of mentality in. And one of the other things from a, a you know, garbage in, garbage out is between business and IT, we got to rationalize. Business owns the data and IT is the custodian of the data. Right. And that goes into, you got to work together. Um, and it's no longer, you can say business and IT, it's like, no, it's we. We collectively, as a company, this is our responsibility. And That's I think the big, the big hairy problem is, you know, companies are actually, the ability to operationalize data in, 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 within an application has, has been done pretty quickly. And in fact, if you started a generative AI project early in the year, you probably felt pretty overwhelmed by mid-year when you saw all the kind of off-the-shelf solutions that started to come out. CRMs and HCMs and SCMs all offering generative. And domain specific stuff. Yeah. The problem yeah. is is that, you know, A is that data fabric and having all that data together and in a, in a format that's usable. And then of course, 
kind of you know managing that whole data state to then have you know what generative AI can be, which is ultimately a business driver, productivity and efficiency, and of course everything you you mentioned about risk and safety and privacy, huge. And by the way, the Biden executive orders and right. in Europe you're seeing more and more. I mean, we heard about it this morning in the keynote, 30, 40, whatever of right. uh, these types of things. But I started this conversation talking about AI is not new. No, it's not. It's not. And so every company on the planet's doing and has been doing uh, every company. Every large company and most even mid-sized companies are doing something with advanced analytics, machine learning, and probably some version of AI. What are you seeing as the biggest shifts in your customer interactions from this kind of traditional analytical AI phase that we've been in to this generative AI phase, which we're now really full tilt in? Yeah, I think there's a, you can look at gen AI in a couple different fashions. One, are you actually generating new data? but also some of the new techniques that we have around you know, large language models and the ability to actually leverage that type of technique to summarize, to synthesize. Um, and that I think is what's fundamentally different between our original analytical AI um, is now we are actually have you know, more advanced techniques that actually allow us to work with the data um, and bring it together uh, where historically we haven't. Um, and the fact that you know every organization's data landscape is different, um, some of these newer techniques. Now, from a Gen AI perspective, um, you know the fact of you know the, the generative piece. There's going to be certain industries, and we've seen it already, mm -hmm. that are adopting it much faster right. than you know something that's in a regulated industry. And so, is it an external facing type usage of it, or is it an internal facing? So. Um, but the fundamental difference, I think, is it's the te technological techniques that we're using. Um, and now, as long as from a business perspective, we can go back and say, what's the source of the data? What's the, um, you know, back, going back into, um, you know, can I trust the data? That's going to be the key thing. And, you know, it's the, the other aspect is, you know, I hate to harp on governance and quality and so forth. But you sit there and it's like, if you don't know those data quality attributes about the data, you can sit there and ask all the questions, but you know what? What's the age of that data? Right. You can get back a bad answer because it looks right, but what was the date of that data? You know? That might, might have been the right answer in 2010. Right. But it didn't read when was the data. We saw and that with the first GPT. Yeah. A lot of that, because that was like three-year-old data, right? Exactly. I think it was so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty pretty substantial problem is keeping the data modernized and making sure that all the data that needs to be considered right. is being considered. Yeah, and that, that aspect, it's, you know, that goes back into, you know, the business has to be the ability to, is it helpful, honest, yeah. and harmless, so. It's just been a great conversation. Um, but I, I did want to end and talk about what ne what's next, and it might, might come off as a non-question because I feel like the industry is pushing enterprises faster than they could even e even take this. But I do feel that that businesses should um, have strategies that encompass the future because what they adopt today might not be what they need in the future. Can you can you talk about uh, uh, from customer point of view what should they be thinking about two, three, four years out? Um. One is, you know, it's fundamentally thinking about where they headed at from a business yeah. perspective. So what are your business objectives? And do your business strategy with the knowledge of, or with the fact that I've got these new technological capabilities. Um, and, you know, your, your AI strategy, your data strategy yeah. are all fundamental to your business strategy. And those are the things that we have to look at um, and making sure that it's incorporated and they can't be done in isolation because we see too many POCs that go off, things don't get operationalized, right. money's being spent and people go, where was the return? Right. And so do the three in concert with each other, don't do them in isolation. Um, is that the future? I think that's the hurdle right. that we have to get over to get to the future. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think we'll see it move slower and then faster and slower yeah. and faster and those hurdles will keep coming up yeah. and we'll get more natural at how we overcome them. But the proliferation is very fun and exciting to keep track Most of definitely. and Cindy, 
Thanks again for joining us. Welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody, you heard it here. We're at Cloudera Evolve 2023 in New York City. We're talking AI, generative AI, and of course, managing your data estate and so much more. Hit subscribe, join us for all of the episodes here at Evolve 2023, and then of course, all the 6.5 shows with Patrick Moorhead here and myself. But for this one, we gotta say goodbye. See y'all later. <laughs>